and welcome to this special edition of DB Sember. Uh, you might have known, like, it, it's it's the holliest, jolliest, Dragon Balliest time of the year, and you may have noticed in our countdown of the uh, top fights of Dragon Ball, there might be some notable absences. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, what? like, we, we spent a good long time talking about these here. Sorry, I'm still trying to get used to not having a popsicle stick up my ass when we're doing this. Nah, it's, it's fine. I, it, it's, it's still there. Ah. Like, is, is there, did you take yours out? You didn't? Oh. I mean, it, I thought it was tradition. Anyway. I hadn't even uh, noticed them. Yeah, there's some missing stuff. <laughs> there, there, there are some things like, I mean, obviously you can only fit so many in a top 12, but I'm betting there are some up there that are surprises to some people when others did not make the list. Most notably, and I think we have to start off with this one, Goku Frieza. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's let's start off with. Yeah. A, no, you got to kind of start off with the big elephant in the room, and that would. But be... But it's such a big elephant. It is I such a big, no drawn out, stretched out elephant that <laughs> takes so fucking long. It's so I have I have my own opinions on why it didn't make the list and why I'm happy it didn't make the list. But ooh. if this were a top twenty four, yes, it yeah, would, it, yeah, it probably it probably would have interested itself in there. Yeah. It's the problem is it is. So we have a lot of good moments in that fight. A lot of really cool, like, there's the giant spirit bomb, like, uh... There's a whole lot of shit that happens, like Frieza using his telekinesis, like, drowning Goku twice, essentially. Yeah. There's the underwater Kamehameha, which, honestly, is one of my favorite things in Dragon Ball, where Goku has to outsmart his opponent and, like... The, the Kamehameha? With two hands that are yeah. balls. He says Kamehameha. In the manga, too. I was like, he did and he did. But okay. It's whatever. Like, yeah. he does that. Not to mention, like, just the dramatic, like, way it starts with Goku walk walking forward while everyone has been destroyed, giving Vegeta that little, like, nod, like, yo, hey, you you died a fighter, man. Like, just there's, there is a lot of good stuff here. And we're not even mentioning the Super Saiyan transformation and how fucking enormous that was. Yeah, the, the biggest issue is just the fact that that fight stretches out for how many episodes in the original like too many just just too many like, like I remember, when we were writing that for the abridged oh my god just watching through those especially that stupid filler episode where goku gets knocked into a volcano and gohan shows up for no reason oh yeah and, and that was after he'd gone super saiyan I right god about that yeah you have to include the whole fight too because it starts when goku shows up and it ends when goku blows up frieza <laughs> And I mean, you know, in that final, you fool! That's yeah. when that fight There are ends. lots of iconic moments in there, but I don't think all of it makes for a good fight. No, yeah. it, it makes for a long, drawn out. And I understand that what the the idea that they were trying to get at, that it was this big, epic, drawn out, you know, battle between these two a superpowers. Tyrant, a tyrant versus the working class hero. <laughs> but the thing that bothers me is that at any point, Frieza could have ended that fight. Without yeah. a second thought, Frieza could have ended that fight, but it was due if, to if him. He took, if he took it seriously. Yeah, and it wasn't until... The uh, the spirit bomb hit him that he was like, oh well, okay, now I'm just gonna kill you guys off. No, I'm just gonna kill you all right now. I don't care anymore. That that was the turning point, and that's I think like one of the big reasons that it's not a great fight is that just Freeze is kind of toying with him, and it it was essentially just two curb stomps in a row. It was you know Goku being toyed with like a little mouse, and then uh, like you know barely holding uh, barely holding on to life while you know stretching every ounce and that that is the part that like nearly got it on the list for me is that he is really stretching and pushing to make sure that he's fucking in this oh yeah, yeah but there's no reason that he should have been able to hold on at all except for the fact that Frieza keeps toying with him he kept and saying like yeah I'm only using about 1% of my power or I mean to be to was. be fair that could be Frieza just being sadistic and you know doing the, the mental warfare as, phys as well as the physical Absolutely. battery and that's cool. it, but it's cool but you can only do that for exactly. so long and the fact not that it goes like on not like 12 episodes <laughs> yeah not to mention so there are a bunch of really cool stuff in that f there's a bunch of cool stuff in that fight Absolutely. let's, there's let's talk about throwing the mountain the, yeah there's... throwing a mountain at him him, Goku finding out that, oh, yeah, I can just hide my power level. Yeah, he can't by, sense yeah. energy. I have to, you know, play this. Like, I have to do some guerrilla warfare. <laughs> yeah. How long does that last? Like Maybe an episode? episode? He does, he does it episodes. once, and it's yeah. never really talked about yeah, again. He does it, like, a couple of times, and then it's over with. This That's fight would be very different if he blinded Frieza. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not to mention it's something that has already been established that, like, you know, when uh, Krillin learned that exact same thing, basically, like, 20 or 30 episodes earlier. Yeah. So, ultimately, 
it's it's definitely got some big epic moments and those are cool and everything but it not it does not it's not a good fight it's actually a long drawn out yeah, the, like the, also also thematically like so let's talk about the fact that Goku has no place fighting Frieza almost in the first place like, kind of i mean he he doesn't Except for, like, you know, the whole Bardock special thing. Yeah. That is the only thing that really ties it in, the fact that Goku is a Saiyan and all this. And, but Goku you know, don't give a damn about his daddy. Yeah, Go Goku has no real agency when it comes to, you know, avenging the Saiyan race. Yeah. yeah. And Vegeta never gets his uppance on that one. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's totally cool, the moment where Goku comes in and says goodbye to Vegeta. That's a good moment. Like, actually, solid emotional moment between Vegeta and, and, and Goku. It's, and it's really, even even now that they've kind of patched up a lot of their relationship, it is still sort of the the most heart-to-heart -heart they ever get with each other. Oh, yeah. Like, Vegeta yeah. is just a broken man. Un until, like, the very end with Boo and yeah. stuff. And even then, I don't think Vegeta ever really says anything to Goku about that. It's just him having a mental recognition of, okay, I yeah, think no, I've I, accepted my place. I acknowledge you as, you know... I acknowledge you as the somebody superior. who's like very powerful. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it, really what this comes down to is the fight itself is more a platform for all of these great moments, mm -hmm. but the fight itself is not as... Like it's it's not the fight that makes it; it's these which, moments that make the fight. Which I think is the running theme with a lot of these honorable mentions. Yeah, it's, it's they they could have in any other list made it just fine, but because we were specifically pointing out the fight aspect, that kind of makes them come short because they've got spectacular moments, probably great art and character work, but the actual you know man to man fight side of this doesn't exactly yeah a, a go huge great. part of my criteria massive part of my criteria was the choreography and how good the fight you know visually was and pacing and all that so how about uh, since we're on this train already okay. Okay, how about we start with another fight in Z with two very big characters that ended up on the chopping block because it kind of suffered from similar from a similar situation and also just uh, it kind of ended up being a curb stomp are we talking about Gohan Cell, which, yes, which went from Cell. which went from a huge curb stop on one side to a huge curb stomp on the other side? Yeah. Like, at yes. no point do they treat each other as equals yeah. until like kind of the blast at the end, and even then but Gohan's even, sort of yeah, barely even hanging then, on. At that blast at the end, Gohan was already injured. You never got to see, you know, super perfect Cell, you know, perfect perfect Cell properly fight Gohan on an even level. Yeah. They never do that. At least with Goku and uh, Goku and Cell, it was an actual like well. Goku might have been uh, outclassed out in certain ways. Ultimately, he still held up. Yeah, there was still an actual fight that happened there. And it had so many great like animated moments, and I mean that's why it fucking made the list. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, but with with Gohan versus a Cell, there are the the fight allows for a lot of great big moments. These great visual moments, but the fight itself, again, it, it just it ends up being another. Cell's beating up on Gohan, then Gohan's beating up on Cell, and then they they end it with a... Uh, with a beam clash. With a beam clash. And beam clashes are cool. I love me some big beam ba blasts. I mean, yeah, let's talk about the one with Goku and Vegeta. Yeah. They, but ultimately, again, that fight wasn't really about, you know, Gohan versus Cell. It was about Gohan versus himself. Basically, yeah. yeah. He had so, to stop his own, stop himself from stopping him. Well, first he had to let go, and then he had to rein it in. <laughs> so, yeah, and don't get us wrong, like uh, uh, Gohan going Super Saiyan two made a one or like I think it was in our top. It is five one moments. of my favorite. It, it might be my favorite moment in all of Dragon Ball Z. It is definitely mine. Oh yeah, like it, it, like it brought tears to my eyes as a kid, and again and again further on. It's just such a good goddamn scene. But and the beam struggle. Oh my god, yeah. the father sent Kamehameha. That whole that is a climax. Look, look. I've got a lot of problems with the Cell Saga from top to bottom. Once the androids show up to the end of it, there are a billion problems with that saga. But if you want one of the best finales in all of Dragon Ball, yeah. it's that. It is tough to top. Yeah. It, it, there was a reason it took us so long to make that episode because <laughs> we wanted to put our goddamn all into it. That's the reason it took. Yes. A year. No. That is the yeah, exact reason. That's the only that is reason. The, the only one. Only reason. Yeah. So. Yeah, that unfortunately that just suffered from from going on just a little too long and being too much of a one-sided curb stomp on both sides. Yeah, that's why it made it's it made our top moments, but not yeah. our top fights. Both of those uh, made our top moments. I think those were like in the top three. Yeah, both of them because they are spectacular moments. 
cushioned by fights, fights that <laughs> yeah. take way too long. I mean, in Kai, both of them are paced significantly better, but that still doesn't make them yeah. better fights, in my opinion. Yeah. Go. Oh my God, Gohan's Kamehameha to uh, like when Cell's up in the air. Yeah, no, oh like that's God. that's so good. Like it's there there are lots of really good moments in 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 Gohan tearing Cell down. But as we stated, it's just a one sided curb stomp yep. that entire time, and cathartic as that might be, it doesn't make for a good fight. Yeah. No. Uh, and now that we've gotten like the two big, the, the, big, yeah. like, why aren't these on the list, Adelaide? And those are our reasons. I mean, you can disagree with us all you want, but that's why they did not make our list. Mm-hmm. Again, if this were a, if this were the top 24, they'd probably still be probably somewhere slipped in, the top in somewhere. 20. Yeah, they probably would have made it. Probably would have been in the top 15, frankly, because uh, the rest of these ones we're going to talk about are arguably good fights, but just have lack in that special something that example, really gets him uh, going back to that idea of you know Goku using his mind and trying to think through his opponent one of the ones that I was pitching very heavily early on was Goku versus hit part two mm-hmm. because it involved Goku like you know first of all he gets his heart like he his heart fucking stops like right at the <laughs> beginning of that goddamn thing and it's like oh shit and then he, you know, brings himself back to life by blasting himself with a huge energy I, wave. I completely forgot about that uh-huh. when we when we like were going through this because when we started this whole list, we basically got to bring in our personal favorite fights to review with everybody. Yeah. And I had entirely forgotten that Goku essentially knew he would die right at the beginning of yeah, the he, fight. He, yeah. He so he set up his account. security measure. He took that into account because he's like, I don't know exactly what this guy's gonna do, but he might kill me. Yeah, and that's <laughs> and a really cool turn. And, like, you know, he brings himself back, and then he spends the entire next chunk of the fight, like, figuring out, okay. And, like, also, leading into this, he's been doing this whole thing where he's like, okay, I'm just trying to sense, huh, I think I found him. Huh? Like, he's just walking around you know, with his eyes closed, just trying to get a sense for this guy who whose powers are a fucking mystery. And I love Hit. I think Hit is probably the best thing that was ever introduced in Super. Oh, yeah, he's he's... He way is, up there. Grant, I think you put it this way. He is a scalpel in a world full of sledgehammers. <laughs> yeah, no, he is He is the one precision uh, instrument among everybody, and that is really cool. Also, I, I love and, Hit, and I feel like something that didn't really uh, carry over into the dub was his age. He's a thousand years old. Yeah, it's 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 hard to, you know, quantify that sort of thing, but, you know, Goku's going around, like, think, like just trying to prepare himself for this tournament against this guy. He's like, oh, man, okay, like, yeah, okay, oh, I feel him, I feel him. How but he then do? he spends the entire, like, first first chunk of the fight just trying to read his ability and figure out exactly how it works and I think that's really cool I like that I like that a lot because you got this guy with a very unique set of abilities that are never truly fully explained uh, which you know I'm fine with but I'm like okay so he can punch through space time but he can also dash through time like how are you supposed to ever fight this guy except Goku like overpowers through his time bubble or yeah, something. Yeah, you know, he just gets so fast that uh, it's, you know, not not that big of an issue for him eventually. Yeah, but uh, basically Goku just powers through it somehow because Saiyan's got to win. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, that's what it both single-handedly, like, it, it was the episode of Super where I'm like, you know what? I'll watch from now on. Because <laughs> up I'll until be that point, in. I've just been, like, listening about it like you know passively i didn't watch any of the movie recap stuff i I kind of tuned in during the first multiverse tournament between champa and beerus and you know most of the time i was just tuned out but that episode is actually what grabbed me for a while until the middle of zamas zamas and black arc that just all of a sudden like you know the the arc fatigue set in pretty heavy for me and i just tuned out for a while again yeah i mean it's definitely got it's definitely got some cool moments although ultimately it I just kind of felt like it was pointless. No, when we when we went through and rewatched it, I'm like, yeah, you know what? This doesn't hold up as well as it did in my head. Yeah, it does have some cool moments, and it's got some uh, great great art from Naoki Tate, uh, mm-hmm. which is one of my favorite animators. He he animates a really good portion of that fight, um, but ultimately, I just I feel like Hit is a character who, with better writers, could be a fantastic fantastic. Uh, Antagonist. I feel or, like they or, don't know what to do with him. Yeah. Kind of. Because they just kind of like, uh, he he immediately got relegated to the piccolo position of jobbing out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. So did you know in the manga he gets a new technique? Does he? Yeah. He gets a new technique. He uses it against Jiren. It's a time lag. Huh. So basically he hits him with an ability that slows down Jiren. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, he kind of does that. Like, basically he freezes him in a... Time stasis time or something. Dimension. But then Jiren's just like, no, I'm done. 
And because Jiren is such a <sighs> interesting character. Nah, he's just unstoppable, man. Yeah, I know. I love Superman Uchiha. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's just unfortunate because there there's that and also the it felt very low stakes like even as the fight was going on it's cool it's a neat idea but the whole time you're kind of like hey it's, it's basically a sparring match between two dudes who know they're gonna have to fight again for real but it was later. a sparring death match yeah so, like there, there was that angle you know to it and goku like the payoff of goku paying for his own bounty was <laughs> oh yeah, yeah yeah no like if we want to talk about what really made that it was the fact that goku put the hit on himself <laughs> yeah, go, goku goku went out and paid for it as we said in the yeah. uh, in the little super short we made you had to go out and buy this piece. I had to go buy a fight from a different <laughs> universe. Um, although, speaking of which, uh, the uh, is there anything from the Other World tournament that we want to bring up? You mean like the, uh, multi, the like multiverse the, one? The, uh, uh, sorry, not Other power. World. Yeah, I'm sorry. The multiverse, the not tournament of power, the universe oh, six s- versus universe seven. Like they're they're straight up one on one fight. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I, I thought about the Goku versus Hit one, but it. <clears throat> I got real excited when Goku Blue plus Kaioken happened. That was actually the yeah, first. Yeah, but again, that's that was like another f- just like a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, it was one of the first things in Super that made me go like, "All right, cool, yeah." This was my first like, "Hell yeah!" thing that wasn't something from a movie. Um, I, I feel bad because I feel like the best part of that fight is actually Goku testing out Hit. I kind of think my favorite part of that whole arc is kind of Champa and Beerus and they never even really fight. <laughs> like like it's just fun seeing them interacting. You know what's an interesting fight actually? Um one that I wouldn't say is the best fight but has a bunch of good moments in it. It's actually weirdly enough Vegeta versus um what was his name? The robot dude. Oh, Meta something. Meta Matten or something. Yeah, uh Metan. They're so, they're so memorable. Yeah, Magetta. 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 Yes. Yeah, Vegeta yeah. and Magetta. I actually really Unmagettable. I actually really like that fight because of the circumstances it takes place in. Uh, there's that um, force field around them that's keeping them locked in, and this this robot is utilizing all like all of this uh, his own personal. How do you put it? So he puts up a lot of heat and smoke, and that traps Vegeta in there. And so Vegeta has to think of a way to get around that. Yeah, it's not so much that he is, like, super strong. It's just that, oh, you've made these fight conditions unbearable. Yeah. And that's a kind of a different beast to have to it, deal it with kinda in a takes, It kind of takes me back to the uh, other world tournament with Goku versus Water Dude, you know? Like, oh, where, Aqua like they just, or whatever? Yeah, where they just kind of change the fighting fields. And I wish they played more with that when, when it came to Bobbity. Yeah. yeah. A Bobbity could have done a lot with that. Yeah, Bobbity's minions. Uh, <laughs> what about Vegeta versus Pui Pui? <laughs> I mean, hey, it's really maybe neat. if it was three hundred times. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That part's fun, I, I guess. Um, an- another one. This is just if we're just gonna start cycling through fights we really liked. Uh, it's very very short, but I brought it up and we all kind of got a kick out of watching it. But Bardock fighting a bunch of soldiers yes. in the special that also uh, made yeah. the list. Yeah, that yeah. would have that would have made- very well animated and like he did some like really did, cool things. It's it's very good because it's incredibly rare for us to see a one on group fight and the group is the bad guys. Yes, uh, and, and the group kind of has him outclassed in yeah. certain ways. But Bardock is even though he is outnumbered and outclassed he, he made it, yeah yeah he it is all about him positioning and moving guys into each other's way so they can't properly fight him as a team like well and they're not they are not very good at cooperating because they're just a bunch of soldiers who are you know just trying to kill this guy meanwhile and, bardock's been on planets where he's been up against multiple opponents many a time yeah, yeah but so, they've only, like i think it's almost always implied that they do it during the full moon for that reason um Actually, they, it's, I believe they say that uh, depending on the stakes or the, like, the, I don't think they always do it on, uh, during Come on, the man. Bardock's a brilliant scientist. He came up <laughs> with the whole fake moon thing. <laughs> yeah, if thing. he's going to make this fake I moon, th- you know I, he. I think they only do that when they need it. Yeah. I mean, it, either way, it, it's just a very cool fight because we get to see him. Like, I think my one of my favorite things in the whole thing is he just, he punches a hole through a guy as smoke is covered, like, using smoke for cover. As the smoke clears, another dude sees a silhouette in the smoke. He's like, Blast. there he is, and blasts him, and it's the, dude, him. it's the dude who's been impaled by his fist. Actually, like, no, no, what had happened was he gets him in the, he gets heads, him in the, oh, the headlock, that guy that's headlock. right. Okay, yeah, um, he, he impales another dude with his hands. Yeah, no, no, he, actually, the uh, w- a guy tries to attack him, he flips 
flips him, and then he act, ends up hitting that guy. It's it's a really cool. It's a really yeah. cool fight. It's definitely definitely deserved to be on the top twenty four at the very least. At the yeah. very least, um, it's, it's also it has solid state scatter playing in the background. Yeah, that song rocks. is fucking great. Yeah, I had, I, had, I had watched the dub, and I don't know if originally if that song was in there, but nope. when we when we rewatched it, I was like, and this track is killer. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Love some Bardock. Uh, yeah, love and, that fight. Yeah, anything to get OG Bardock in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Another now, one. Speaking of Bardock, we talked very briefly about it, but episode of Bardock, Bardock versus Chilled, very well oh, animated. Yeah. yeah, no, like it's so good eye candy. If it weren't part of a garbage special, completely negligible, and involved dumb bullshit, and AKs, kind of makes me hate the <laughs> guys. Yeah. Come on, we're talking about Dragon Ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Super Saiyan Bardock is dumb bullshit. Like jump sharking. Yeah. Total bullshit, but not a development. Holy a shit! Of. Him knocking the crap out of chilled, chilled is so good. It is, it is a beautiful. It's actually one of the most beautifully animated we Dragon Ball. We never got a dub for that. Yeah. No. So uh, you know, maybe go to Team Four Star and and check out our. Uh, oh my gosh! Yeah, check version. out our old videos. <laughs> yeah. Um, we got, actually, we got it for I, I love that special. I love our. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. That that is dumb like, bullshit. That's that's the one thing I love about dumb bullshit Dragon Ball specials is you can do anything with them. Because nobody really cares about the dumb bullshit specials. Yeah, yeah, we made plan to eradicate the Super Saiyans into a Christmas special, and gosh darn it, I it love worked. that. <laughs> I mean, it's got a lot of red and green. It works. Yeah, yeah. Um, but beyond that, uh, yeah, no, Bardock. Bardock. Funny enough, Bardock has had some cool fights. Mm-hmm. The, the few he's given, uh, yeah, turn out pretty well. I think there's a reason people kind of love him. Uh, um, we've been bringing up fights. Do you have any that yes, that actually, really applied yeah. to you? So the Tournament of Powers filled to the brim with all sorts There's of There's a lot of moments in there. Um, like, I, I, One of the ones that I want to bring up uh, is actually... So it's unfortunate that it's only one really good part of a fight, but it's when 18 takes out Ribrianne. Oh, okay. You kept talking this up, and then you showed it to Grant and I, and we're just like... I don't know, man. I think it's one of the coolest defeats of Con- an anime. Like when she's running up the really giant like arm and yeah. stuff like that, like I, I get it. Like it's it's cool, it's neat, it's different. But I maybe it's just the fact that I hated Rebrienne in that entire universe as a whole, and I think they deserve to be erased. Lanny <laughs> just hates love and any reminder. Hey, look, they wouldn't have been so bad if the tournament tournament of power hadn't been drug out by twenty oh episodes more God. than it needed to be. I know. Yeah, twenty. No. <laughs> I, I, I felt like that arc was going on for a year. It almost did, I think. Uh, actually, it started at like episode seventy six, went to one twenty nine. Yeah, so like it went for a year, didn't it? Yeah, it's pretty fucking I mean, close. There was the lead in uh, with with the re, uh, with the recruit. The re, there was the recruitment arc, and then the exhibition arc. But then the actual tournament of power started. And I think it was like thirty something episodes. Like I, when when they started doing the tournament of power, I expect like you know, that forty five minutes that lasted. Man, Frieza ain't got shit on that forty five <laughs> minutes. Yeah, no, uh, no. Uh, but, Those were forty five Frieza fucking minutes, and that's nuts. Man, like free even Freeze is looking at his watch like, really? But uh, We're still doing this, huh? <laughs> I, I expected when they started that arc to be like, okay, bam, that universe is gone, that universe is gone, that universe is gone. I and, expected and it to be most real of the time quick. to be spent. Actually, what I expected was that they uh, so they had this they fucking uh, really heavily dropped that Universe 9 was going to get erased before the tournament even started mm. by them trying to uh, like mess with cheat. the yeah. stuff. Yeah. To cheat. I thought they were going to get caught and then... Uh, just vaporize the whole thing and be yeah. like, alright, there's a set of enemies that yeah, we're just, done just with. Just to show you, this is, this is for serious. Yeah, specifically because they had established uh, they'd already shown Universe 9 fighting. Mm. So I'm like, yeah, you know, why not just yeah, we get don't rid of them? them again. We're, we've already seen their best guys. Why do we want to watch the rest of them fight? And then we did. And, and then they get knocked boring. out for next to no reason. Yeah, they get knocked out almost. And they're still and they're still the like first ones to get erased. And then you get that oh my god, yeah, they're erasing things, which it, is it matters. Yeah. But that being said, there's yeah, the Rebrian thing that you were talking about. Yeah, the go, go ahead and say why you liked that. I love the animation for the actual like because. It's so. It looks so good when she's running up Ribrianne's arm, and then Seventeen jumps in front of her to uh, help take the shots, to make sure that Eighteen can get that final blow in. And it just looks really good. Yeah. I, and not to mention, it's two on one against this giant opponent. It's just not something you see in Dragon Ball very often. And it's I, nice I, I to see Seventeen that. and Eighteen work together. Again. Yeah. And there are a bunch of fights in the Tournament of Power, like in general, that get so close to being like really good, but are drugged down to the fact that. Uh, the plot relevance is actually kind of it's, negligible. And also, like, at, at, it, 
it doesn't help that you're feeling like super arc fatigue like yeah. almost oh, the entire yeah. time. Yeah, so let's talk about a fight that didn't make it in there, but I think wholeheartedly deserved to be. Okay. Uh, when Goku goes Ultra Instinct for the first time. Yeah, oh, his first like, time. Th- this was this w- this was like real close for all of us, I yeah. think, because yeah. that was a really cool moment. Like you know, he comes back from the spirit bomb. You get that great moment of like he's coming. Yeah. Yeah. And then the fucking music kicks in for the first time, and you're just like, Argh! don't all like the gods like stand up? No, that that's <laughs> what, that later? They, they stand. They all stand up when he masters. Okay, it. okay, okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember if that was there then, but yeah, the it's there's that the dramatic walking when uh, Taupo is like shooting at him, and he's, and he's just like, walking psh- through all the blasts. Yes, nothing like that is maybe visually, one of my favorite amazing. shots in anime. Period. Yeah, visually with the music playing in the background, yeah. I'm just sitting it's, back here like you get a freaking common rider theme like, blasting in. It's yeah. so good. It is the only moment, I think, in Dragon Ball Super that even comes close to matching the peaks of Z. Yeah. Yes. For me, definitely. Like, and I just, I, I was floored. I could not believe that I was watching this scene happen and how it plays out. It made me retroactively like Super a lot. Yeah, more. I know, right? I guess as soon as that moment happened, I was like, you know... I've been whining about this show, but it was, I think it might have been worth it to get to stuff like this. But then uh, the rest of that arc happened. Well, it, but then it, yeah, it kind of has a non ending. Yeah. Um, where it's like, oh, he hasn't really mastered it. Like, oh, wait, it. no, this was just kind of a second act, a little, hey, here, here's, here's yeah. this to keep your interest. Look, and then it something's drags coming. Out again. Some, this is the closest we're going to get to name dropping Super Saiyan in the Freeze arc. <laughs> so if this were a properly paced arc of a show, um, what would have happened was he would have been introduced to Ultra Instinct, but then they would have lost that fight, and then there would have been a break in between that and Goku fighting Jiren again later, and other stuff would have happened. Yeah. But due to the fact that we were locked into a single place with a single, like, like and a he had, single And he plot, has to, like, do that transformation, like, two more times. Oh, my God. And we'll talk about the other time, because the other time he does it, like, is super good. Oh, yeah. fuck yeah. yes. Um, but... The, like oh the the second time not there he does it basically three major yeah. times in the arc yeah. and all three times are really cool <laughs> but the first and third time are like the best the of the best. Uh, three yeah. of them the second one we'll talk about here in a second but yeah no that first time that was so cool like that is one of, like like I said probably one of the probably the best moment in super yeah, yeah. I would I would say so um and then. The second time he goes on Ultra Instinct. B- this before is before like, we jump to that yeah, real quick, yeah, sure. I, I do I do want to mention because uh, cat out of the bag, it's against Kefla. Um, but before that, Super Saiyan, I don't know if it's one or two, Goku fights Kale and Kalifla separately, and that was one of the first spots yeah, where when the he, when animation like, looked incredible. Yeah, when he was like rewarming up. Yeah. Oh, and I can tell you why. Hmm. So. Okay, anybody who pays attention to uh, Sakuga, or otherwise known, uh, you know, the the key, the word being thrown around uh, nowadays for good anime animation. Okay. Um, and Dragon Ball is probably familiar with the name Yuya Takahashi. Yuta, Yuya Takahashi is an animation supervisor, and the way that animation supervisors work on episodes of any show is that they come in there and they say, all right, these the like these um, these are the parts that need to look good. No 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 no. What they do is they provide the uh, baseline of how the characters are going to look, and they come in and they do corrections over other people. Mm, okay. um, Yuya Takahashi has a boner for cell saga the cell saga designs. Ah, um, in so fact, that's why I liked it. Yeah, in <laughs> fact, he's got he's got a very specific love for the Bardock or not. I'm sorry, not Bardock. Uh, the uh, Broly movie. And okay. a lot of the designs that went into that. He likes the rounder cheeks with the squintier eyes. He, um, I'm, in, the, I'm the, into that. The pointier noses. So one of the things that... The you more mu- detailed hair. Yeah. One of the things that became instantly recognizable, that Yuya Takahashi would show up, and then suddenly it looks like OG Dragon Ball again. Yeah. Because he just said... he Basically, he took... Um, Ken, uh, oh, gosh. Uh, Tadayoshi Yamamuro, the director for Dragon Ball Super... He took his designs and said, "No, fuck that. I hate these. These are dumb and I'm going to go I'm going to make this look like OG Dragon Ball again." And then he did. And then everyone loved it. Yeah. Like if every episode of the Tournament of Power arc looked like that, even if its substance was bad, I think I would have been entertained. Yeah. 
because um, it looked amazing. And that's why that's why animation supervisors, you know, you get Naoto Shishida, you get Naoki Tate, you get Yuya Takahashi, Takeo Ide, you get all these great people with their own small things that they do to, you know, to make things flow smoother or or and sometimes sometimes they're not just supervisors, they're key animators. Yeah. So a supervisor will go in and correct other people's material, while key animators, which sometimes the one and the same, uh, will go in and animate a whole segment themselves. This was the first time we saw Yu Takahashi just come in there and do his own thing. And then everyone's just sitting back like, oh my God, <laughs> where have you been? Yeah, just give this guy the keys uh, to the kingdom. But yeah, that second time where he goes ultra instinct there against Kefla and just... Yep. Man, fucking yeah. like, <laughs> fucking like surfs over the, the fucking spin. beam attack and just Be, even before that, like the fight isn't as well animated at first as falling the, down that cliff when it's upside down, just whoosh, 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 bam. Yeah, no, it's it's great. There's a lot of great choreography and set design and storyboarding, and what they did was make a fantastic finale between Kefla and Goku. Yeah, that uh, let's be honest. The way he beats her is up in the t like that would have probably made if a, this were our, that top, been a 20, top, top twenty yeah probably top uh, probably top fifteen if this were our top moments it would have been in our top twenty four top moments yeah for sure I, and, like, and this is coming from Super a series that we have been admittedly not, nice not to. huge fans yeah. of um, although if we're talking about Super fights that I really wanted to make this list but I understood why I didn't. Uh, Goku and Trunks versus Zamas and yeah, Black. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we we, watch we watched that. through that, and I guess like the problem I had is that like, where do you cut that one? Like, because yeah. it it just keeps going. Yeah, kind of. The best part of it is when it starts. Yeah, there's this hugely amazingly animated fight by uh, by Naoto Shishida, um, who's he does a lot. Who did a lot of work on the new Broly movie, and uh, you can actually, if I showed you a bunch of his shots, you'd suddenly understand where he is. Um, because he loves to do these big shots where characters come in and out, and a lot of uh, like um, oh, panoramic, pan yeah, panoramic shots with the camera. He's he has this very springy animation style, and yeah, he's all over that fight when it first starts. You have characters coming in and out of frame. You have all this different flying and explosions and huge clouds of dust. That's totally his style, and it's at full effect in that fight. You see, it, it's. It looks more fluid and animated than any other Dragon Ball fight scene up until that point, and it's kind of crazy. So that's why I loved like that whole scene. It was something we'd never gotten in Dragon Ball before, and here it was on full display as a with a multiple people fighting. You don't get that very often yeah. in Dragon Ball. No, I, I I definitely get where you were coming from on it. It's it's another one of those scenarios where it's like, man, th like there's there is a whole lot going on. The animation is great, but holy shit, like th there's there's just so much going on that at times it's hard to keep up with. Not to mention that arc drags. Oh and my even, god, even that Do, segment like, of the arc drags. Just just a brief fucking. I can't even. Okay, so they so Goku Black follows them back, and then you know he learns how to go Super Saiyan because he fought Goku doing it. But then they go back, and they're like, "Oh shit, we can't do this. We gotta go back and learn something." Oh, okay, we'll do the Mafuba. Let's go back. Oops, forgot the Mafuba thing. Well, guess we're fighting normal now. Yeah, there's there, and and then they have to go back, and then it's it's a fucking yeah. mess. It's, it's not great. It um, is. It, it is. Arguably the worst arc. It, it's a fight with too many I, retreats. I, it's not the worst arc. Not in Super. Not by a long shot. Okay, it's arguably fact, the worst one I watched. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. The Resurrection F arc is the worst Dragon Ball arc of all time. Never. It, it did not watch. I was yeah. going to say, have to take your I word watched on the it. movie yeah. and I was underwhelmed by that. Yeah. <laughs> not even going to talk about the fights in that one. Yeah. In <laughs> fact, it, here. Let oh, me, wait, no. We'll we talk have, about we, one. We almost put one. <laughs> there was one. Oh, yeah. The Z Fighters versus the Frieza army. Yes. Actually, that is really cool. Mm. And it was really cool, but it's really short, and it... Kind of doesn't matter. Kind of did nothing, and there was CGI bullshit. Yeah. Honestly, if they had... I, I, I'm going to say this honestly. They should have committed to killing those soldiers, because they would have been able yes. to do way more creative and cool moments, but they were they were like, no, we have to make sure we don't harm them. And so weren't they all dead by the end anyway? Yeah, they all yep. died by the end, but nope, can't have the heroes killing murderers? I don't... <laughs> get, man, it's... This is an invasion of your planet. Yeah, no, at that point, it, like, this is war. <laughs> we're not going to be taking prisoners here of Freeze's army. No, like, honestly, they should have just murdered all of them and then... <laughs> 
Isolate this, sort them out. Isolate this clip, please. Yeah, and, and the, <laughs> murder them all. And and you know, I think one of the reasons they did it is because so Frieza could say, "Oh no, that one over there, Goku son, he's actually far more powerful, but he's holding back." <laughs> yeah, we, he needed an excuse to be like, "This is why no one's dying." <laughs> yeah, it's like, why doesn't Gohan just wreck them all? Oh, because I mean, here's the thing: maybe Gohan, but I do not buy for a second that Piccolo isn't murdering people. Yeah, <laughs> I see. What they should have done was have Gohan just square up against Frieza. Yeah, have Gohan be the one holding back and have everybody else like going Fuck No, you. no. Have Gohan square up against Frieza. Have like he yeah. just fights Frieza yeah. while the army's dealing with everyone else. And, and then and push and Gohan to his limit and then have Gohan lose. Yeah, and then have him almost kill Gohan and then Goku shows up. Would have made that whole segment a whole lot better because then you could have had a moment where everyone's busy actually having a fight. And uh, Frieza gets to show off a little bit of his stuff. And this it gives is, Gohan a bigger four star what if resurrection. Yeah, sorry. Was good. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, point being, that fight is actually pretty cool to yeah, watch. The, it's, the, it's, it's fun to see everybody contribute and do stuff. We've even got Jocko in there shooting yes. with his Everybody laser gets gun. to show shit off. Krillin's like throwing around Kienzan's, like cutting down rocks and shit. And Tan yeah. busts out Kiko Ho. Not to mention, you get like a whole like cascade of different environments that people are going into. Which yeah, is really no. Cool. Like I love when Tenshin on goes into that cave and then starts, you know, like blasting them away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bottlenecking them. It's, mm -hmm. it's a good move. Yeah. Um, oh, they're so they're yeah. using strategy, and then there's Jocko and his like chicaner is like jump off the cliff, ha ha, suckers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> runs the other way. Yeah, no, it's great. It, it, Jocko gets some really good moments in there. It's too bad half of it's CG. Mm -hmm. It it did not look pretty. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, that that was a cool fight. It was really cool. Like I, I, it, I dug that. It was the best part of Resurrection F. You know, it's too bad we don't have Broly out yet. I'm yeah, no, I mean, like, if we're going to talk about things that might need honorable mentions. Fucking Broly yeah, comes yeah. out in like next month. Yeah, we haven't seen the Broly movie. Haven't yet, had a chance so. to see it. I know it just came out in Japan. Everyone who has seen it says it's the best Dragon Ball fights they've ever seen. Well, Great. I mean, there's your honorable mention right there. <laughs> Go see Dragon Ball Super movie Broly in theaters in January and you know, let us fucking know. I mean, we'll definitely see it. We'll talk about it. I guess oh, I've never yeah. thought about it. Is its title just Dragon Ball Super? Bra Broly? Dragon Ball Super movie Broly. No, okay. Dragon Ball Super Broly. Okay, Dragon yeah. Ball Super Broly. Okay. Yeah. No, Dragon Ball Super Broly. No Broly's Revenge, no, no. The Nightmare Returns. Or, um, well, I, I'm trying to think of any other super fights before just jumping into a completely different Yeah, because there, there's, there's like plenty of Z stuff, because, I mean, I, I'll throw this one out there, which was mostly a joke. Oh, but, yeah. uh, mostly a joke amongst us, but I'm thinking, like, top 24, you never get a chance to see a normal human trying to fight somebody and that brought me to Videl versus Spopovich. Yeah. Which is a really cool fight up until it becomes concerning with how much violence is happening to that woman. Yeah. To that girl. <laughs> yeah. She is so this, in high to this school. 16, I think, year old girl. Yeah. It, it is she, like 15 to 16, it, somewhere it, there. It is a really cool, like, brutal fight. Like, yeah. she breaks the dude's neck and she's like, oh my God, what have I done? And then it gets bad. Yeah. yeah like, it's, it's an interesting fight just because of how dark and brutal that it gets. And it's between two characters who are not, like, this is barely Dragon Ball level. No, you, yeah. you, you get to see a human who is arguably, like, you know, one of the strongest humans on Earth, one of the strongest normal humans. Yeah, Videl is crazy strong. Probably stronger than her dad. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, maybe. I, I would but, say, I'm pretty uh, sure. Then you have Spopovich, who is, you know, not. Not, not even Mr. Satan caliber. Let's say, meta, let's say basically a meta human because of his. Uh, yeah. You basically, like you take a guy who wasn't Mr. Satan caliber and then you juice him full of magic steroids. Yep. And all of a sudden he's this fucking monster demon. Yeah. yeah. And Videl could have beaten him if it weren't for the fact that he had. A, if he weren't again, unkillable. Yeah. And so it's it's actually it's it's kind of a cool fight. Unfortunately, yeah, no, it just kind of turns into Videl getting brutalized, and it's super uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like it's 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 crazy uncomfortable at the end. But like, there was a reason that I brought that fight up, and it's this it's this thing that you don't get in Dragon Ball. Yeah, yeah. you don't get that very and, often. And it's, and it's done this, well. Like I, I do I do want to say yeah. like you, you know not only is it unusual, but her fight with Spopovich while it's you know be before it becomes this disgusting beatdown uh it's really good like she it does cool martial arts tricks and the choreography is exciting and yeah it is, it is well done also just getting to watch videl fight is always exactly. nice because it stops after that <laughs> yeah i mean I, she got a baby put in her i will never never be okay with how videl of all characters stop yeah. being a fighter excuse yeah. me 18 
Like, <laughs> See, for the longest time, yeah, she eight, was out of it. 18 makes sense. Yeah, 18, does 18, she? 18 seems like she kind of just got these powers by happenstance and was just like, I'm using them because I can. I guess, yeah. Yeah, she's not. A, she doesn't care about martial arts. Videl spent her whole life training until she gets a baby put yeah, on Yeah, Chi Chi. Yeah, was yeah. a martial artist before she. But she, got, but, but, she but she, but her also, goal yeah, was she to be wanted to be. Yeah, she wanted to be a mom. In fact, that was actually the thing that she thought she was supposed to do. She she aspired to be the perfect housewife, which is you know. I mean, a little nineteen yeah, fifties, but yeah, it's a choice if you want to be. If you want to be a it great was her mom, choice that Toriyama made for yeah. her. Yeah. Um, but 18, 18 at least makes sense of like I don't want to fight. That's dumb. I'm just gonna take care of my daughter and live my life. Um, but Videl, no, I don't buy it. Anyway, so enough. Uh, yeah, that that that's a good one. Um, trying to think of other Z ones real quick, but it's it's barely worth mentioning since we already talked about Gohan versus Cell. But when Gohan just destroys all the Cell Juniors is also one of my favorite curb stops. I, I know, I know that's one of your like favorite like, things just, from that moment. Yeah, like uh, I little little story. I had the VHS tape of that and uh, nearly broke it from watching it so many times when I was like fourteen because I was like, this is the coolest cartoons can ever be. And and so they far, I have not been proven wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is a pretty cool. It's, it's pretty cool to watch uh, uh, Gohan just go just through job them out all, yeah, all those exactly. juniors. Just and and like ev everyone he shows up with, like all of the people are just shocked. They're like, "Is that? Are we sure that's Gohan? Did someone else? Is this somebody else?" And it's implied that each of those Cell Juniors is maybe slightly weaker than Cell with how much they're handing the shit to yeah. like Vegeta and Trunks. It's it's interesting because you never really get a feel for how strong the exactly are like that, to that's be. that's that's kind of why you have to gauge it off the fact that well Vegeta's still kind, kind of, of doing barely okay. holding his own there so yeah. they've got to be really fucking strong yeah so it but it is it is fun to watch uh, yeah it just, is it is very satisfying I understand that it is not a great fight again, because again catharsis yeah but if if we're looking for like oh shit that was a fight that I remember <laughs> that's definitely up there oh yeah. I think again, again. I think that's a lot of the stuff with Gohan. And yes, Cell unfortunately, arc is that it's all catharsis and it's all great imagery. That's sort of Gohan in a nutshell, because like really, if like his other cool moment when he shows up to beat the shit out of Super Boo for a yep. minute, like yeah. that is all a one-sided, one-sided stomp until no, it I'm until it turns kill around. You. Yeah, and you know, summarily kind of stops being cool once it does. Yeah, and. It's, it's a it's, shame. I loved Gohan as a kid. Like, yeah. when he showed up for that moment, I'm like, fuck yeah. Yeah, and it was real exciting. I loved, he's Go done. I loved Gohan as a an adult. I, 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 I like... I like Gohan growing up and realizing who he wants to be. That that stuff's all cool, but just yeah. wish just the fact wish that he kept putting like, one foot in and one foot well, out. Let's not, bitched let's, in the process every single time. Yeah, let's not talk about how Gohan's handled in Super because it's actually terrible. Yeah, he's not in Broly. Yeah. No, he's not in Broly. Huh? Yeah, but, he doesn't um, show up once. But for, for other fights, uh, I'm trying to think of any other Z ones that really stood out to me, because there are plenty. Um, I mean, if we uh, go back there and we think, like, you know, Goku and Piccolo versus Raditz. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, was that one, actually, that one is, yeah, no, that's, a that is actually a pretty cool fight. In fact, I There's was There's a thinking, lot of really cool shit in that one. I was thinking about that making the top uh, 12, personally, because... It was close. Like, yeah. No, it's a, it's a really cool fight, because it's two on one. Um, and they struggle, and they win. They win that fight. But, yeah. they, ha but they have to, like, really but, push for it. Yeah. yeah, they have to sacrifice my, Goku for it. My biggest issue is that they pull the same thing twice. They, I got your tail. Yeah. I got your tail. Please let me go. Okay. okay. I got your tail. Let me go. I change. Not okay. this time. <laughs> like, they do that shit. Yeah. And, like, it, I mean, it, it ends in that very, like, very climactic special beam cannon Makanko suppose straight through Goku's chest and it's such a cool moment and obviously it sets the pace and it's the first time that your protagonist has died yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a fight that ends with the first death of Goku which in any other universe might be a big deal but since we can bring him right back it's yeah kind in, of forgotten but in fact I'd say it's almost de facto thir our 13th entry if I to be honest because it just it has so many cool things going for it I would it does like Raditz has some really cool moves like he's got that double back kick and then you've got like Goku and Piccolo showing off like all this stuff that they did in Dragon Ball it's it's that weird tween period yeah, yeah. Where, like they're starting to kind of get that Z flow but it's not quite quite there yet yeah i mean you can the interesting thing so here's here's something cool uh the series changed directors near the end of dragon ball and going into z 
I believe it. Yeah. So uh, you can already feel the big switchover happening once uh, Ma Junior shows up. Yeah, I was going to say, the Piccolo Goku fight at the end of Dragon Ball feels like Proto Z, like almost perfectly. It, it never feels the same ever again yeah. from that point forward. Yeah. And uh, that's one of the reasons, once they changed over to directors, they were like, you know what? We're going in a very different direction with this. The manga is going in a very different direction. Yeah, we're going so, from fantasy to sci-fi. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is why the anime, the manga has no distinction between Dragon Ball Z, uh, but they decided for the anime, nope, this is Z now. It gets a new title, so people know it's different. <laughs> yep. So. Um, but speaking of Dragon Ball and the almost assumed 13th, uh, for a hot minute, we had Goku versus Krillin. Uh, from yeah, the, the, from the TN tournament. Yes. Yeah. The 22nd? I don't fucking know. Tournament? Something like that. Um, but yeah, the Goku-Krillin fight is really good because it is the, the two turtle students fighting and duking it out. It had really good choreography. Like yeah. We sat there and we watched through that like, wow, they got some yeah. really cool stuff in here. And uh, Krillin's holding his own. Yeah. It's it's unfortunate, though, that while it does have some good choreography, story-wise, it doesn't really add up to much. Yeah. Because, and that's that's kind of actually yeah, a huge detractor. Yeah. Not, not just because it doesn't have much to do with the story, but it really doesn't do much for the characters. They're rivals at this point, and it just kind of feels like Krillin is obviously going Krillin to Krillin is obviously the weaker one, and you don't yeah get that kind of blowout that you got with like let's let's call another Toei show into this one uh Luffy versus Usopp which was really cool for an anime oh fight. yeah oh yeah you want to talk about a fight between and the main character and somebody who you don't think stands a chance that fight in the anime is ridiculous I and, cannot... and you don't ever get that sense here like you yeah. get Krillin like haha I'm holding my own and yeah I was gonna say if anything it's like its merit is at this point Krillin is sort of already by a lot of the cast kind of dismissed as like and he's like the second fiddle yeah. guy uh, but it, but let's compare that actually to another krillin v- goku fight yeah the in one super. in super yeah the one in super is actually where they're, where they're cool. fighting on that helipad on the roof and it's like really fucking cool and krillin's like cutting out the bit of the like tournament floor beneath goku Loose, is like m- making him lose all sweat. i have to do is make you go out of bounds i, I don't yeah. i don't need to beat you one-on-one yeah man. hey this is i know i can't power. i know i can't fight you one-on-one <laughs> yeah and i loved it i was like yes Okay, not only is this well animated, but it's got a lot of good attitude to it. It's got some great choreography. And then you have that like great Krillin 18 moment at the end. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. this entire arc leading up to that was all, all about like basically Krillin not like Krillin not feeling like much of a man, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And 18 even like kind of reflecting <laughs> that. Like they're having this weird like it's lull like, in their hey, marriage uh, at the moment. Well, <laughs> she does that to push him. It's, yeah, it's him. but it's still like you get that feeling that there's this kind of like lull. There's like, some, like there's some tension. Here. They, they have they haven't been romantic in a bit there probably. <laughs> nah, I I one hundred percent believe that's eighteen trying to push him. No, I, but I I trust me like that's the <laughs> feeling the show is pushing for you though. Yeah, right there is that like yeah you know Krillin is. You know, he's he's kind of relegated. Just like, I'm just going to do my job. I'm, I'm not a cop do now. Else. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, he gets this like spur back, this burn, and, like this fire can rekindle. Are you saying of when him. Super comes back with a new season, 18 might be pregnant? Oh, boy. Are we gonna, <laughs> no, can't be. Can't be because, you know, they don't have two kids by the end of Z. No, you're right. <laughs> I'm still wondering what the world they're going to... What the what are they going to do with the I am still so... You know what? It's This is not I a time or place. I, I think that they're going to have to do a time skip at some point because right now they're trapped in a position of, well, obviously this has to happen. Yeah. But, I mean, at this at this point here, like, I feel that like fight was really cool, especially when, like, you know, you got that Krillin 18 moment, which I'm all about. Yeah. Oh, also, uh, if we're going to talk about androids... All right. Yeah, we're going to talk about androids. Let's talk about 17 versus Goku. Holy crap. Yeah, the, that fight. Uh, this is the first time those two had ever met. Also. Yeah. yeah. And their fight is gorgeous. Holy shit. But the reason uh, that it did not make this list at all or even consider it, it has a non-ending. Oh, it has a non-ending, yeah. and it's very short. It's yeah. very short. It has a non-ending, and the arc around it is stupid. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I what, the- what, the space poachers? Oh, oh, that. I mean, okay, yeah. The, what happened? That's after that. I mean, oh, okay. And to, that be, and to be fair, that doesn't really hinder the fight itself. Yeah, True enough. After or before? I can't remember. Doesn't uh, matter. Uh, Sp- uh, yeah. Yeah. Somewhere. But in Space there. Poachers was dumb. But their fight is gorgeous, and it's it looks so good. Cause it's it's kind of amazing. You have that fight. You also have uh, Krillin, Krillin versus Goku. You have Go- Goku versus Gohan, mm-hmm. which is also also has some pretty cool stuff in it. Um, you also have uh, you have Super Muscle Boo versus Goku. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you actually have Goku versus uh, 
What was that? Um, so in the exhibition arc, I actually kind of liked some of those fights. The uh, with the, uh, the dingoes, trio to danger. The trio to yeah, dangers. I think the I think all three fights with the trio to dangers. They are all three okay. Some, some solid fights. Like, like I don't think any of them are bad. I don't think any of them are also particularly great. Now, yeah. Can we can we talk about like one fight that I I was actually kind of thinking about, but I don't think could ever actually you know be considered a fight. Huh. Just when Goku brings Frieza back to Earth, and they're just doing that like uh, dick measuring contest <laughs> oh, back yeah. and forth. No, I think yeah. that is the best example of their relationship possibly ever. Oh my it's god. It kind of encapsulates it perfectly. I hated them Oops, bringing my back. hand slipped. Whoops, mine did too. <laughs> now try to make sure your hand make sure your hand doesn't slip anymore, right? Oh. Well then what will slip next? <laughs> Just like, uh, these, Yeah, there's odds. Are section. these two gonna fight or are they gonna fuck? I know, right? <laughs> and I think I, I think it wasn't they were uh, trying to apply sexual tension, but I do think they but were it's heavily there. Yeah. But they were heavily trying to imply like, yeah, they're Look, ready to go at we, any time. We already know that most of the characters in Dragon Ball Z are fight sexual. Yes. yes. They're phytosexual. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, no, that fight the Every interaction with them, plus the miniature fight that they have to kind of get get it out of their system before mm -hmm. the fight starts, is beautiful. It's better than it, Resurrection F. Yeah, actually, no. Those two episodes are better for Frieza material than every second of Resurrection F. Pretty much. I don't mean to get so down on that movie. I know there are people out there that really like it, but well, man, it, is it a... Because the last third of it is bullshit. And, not, and absolutely none of it has any tension because Goku already states like, oh yeah, I can go blue. And, uh, like, you're like I, I already have this form. Like, there's no impetus for me getting this. I just have it already and I'm already better than you. Also, you're not as well trained as I am in holding this form. So, just ha, ha you lose. Sort of feels like Frieza is kind of an afterthought in his own movie. Yep. And that's really disappointing. Which is why you should have fought Goku. Gohan, at least, and then, you know... Got something some, out yeah, of it. Yeah, I don't know. Something. Anyway, away anyway. from that dishonorable mention, uh, to springboard off of androids real quick, uh, 18 versus Vegeta, I think, is very fun because it just yes. is constantly yeah. switching environments. We've got the... As, as much of a car stomp as it yeah. actually is. Yeah, it's very one-sided, but the... The places it goes are so good, and it's great character stuff for Vegeta with him just blowing up humans in this effort to kill Android 18. Yeah, these these dangerous androids that are there to murder everybody, and Vegeta's the one killing everyone. Exactly. Yep. Like, there, there's plenty of blood on, uh, all over the streets after this fight, and it is not because of there's the <laughs> bad guy. Oh my god, I just realized, if we had a top 12 curb stomps... Oh, oh, that's yeah. up there. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. If, if we had a top twelve curb stomps, Gohan, Gohan Cell Gohan would be like Cell, in the top five. Super Saiyan Goku, Frieza, Vegeta eighteen. Yeah. yeah, Vegeta eighteen. Oh my God! Just there's a lot of there are a lot of great. I mean, curb there, stomps there, there are a lot of there are a lot of worse curb stomps. Like let's talk about like Krillin versus Pine Tar and shit. But <laughs> who? Yeah, exactly. The, exactly. The guy at the end of Z. Pintar, okay. the okay. dude in the okay. tournament, okay. the 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 okay. fat guy that does somersaults and okay. shit. <laughs> well, that was an end of Z. That was the oh, okay. No, that was that? The, no, that was, boo, that was boo. It's the tournament in the boo arc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. not the not the future future one. Or uh, uh, Goten and Trunks versus uh, Adasa <laughs> and whatever the fuck their name is. Oh yeah, but yeah, I uh, I I very much very much uh, enjoyed a lot of the uh, a lot a lot of the. Uh, stuff leading up to the tournament of power and in the tournament of power, but it is unfortunate that basically only one thing from the from Super, I think, even made the list. Uh, well, I mean, unless you count Battle of God or unless you count Battle of Gods, uh, I wouldn't. Yeah, I kind of do because that's like the impetus of which Super was built from. I look at it as like the bridge between Z and Super. Yeah, because it's like. I think it's still listed it's as still a, Dragon a Dragon Ball Z, Z movie. movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it has Chala Head Chala as its theme. Theme. It, it was meant to be a nostalgia kick. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Um, um, oh. uh, the an, another really good fight that I just kind of thought about is Goten and Trunks versus each other in, at the, uh, oh, yeah, in the finals of the. Yeah, of the I was, was going to bring that up. When that we is were, a cute uh, fight. That is not a bad fight at yeah. all. It's cute. It's not bad, but it's like. It's it's fun to watch like you know Vegeta and Goku just sit there like wow look at them beat yeah. the shit out of each other yeah. that's my boy get him kill him kill him put him in the dirt <laughs> like it's it's a very fun fight it's obviously very low stakes it's just two kids goofing yeah but uh but it, it's full of fun stuff and having two <laughs> children who might be capable of certainly leveling a city maybe blowing up a considerable chunk of the planet just fighting and be like if you let me win i'll give you some toys <laughs> like just come on we yeah. won't use hands 
Like it's it's just a lot of fun, silly stuff with some good choreography yeah. when they actually fight. There's, there's admittedly good stuff in that fight. It's not something I uh, considered for like I think yeah. it's something we briefly considered for top twenty four. I think we I think we really looked think at it just it. to just to be sure, but it was not one that we were. Like, I mean, was then in we'd contention. also have to look at like one of my favorite comedic fights, which is. Uh, uh, Mighty Mask versus 18. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good one. Which I think is a lot of fun. It's not particularly good, and it kind of ends in a false way if she just kind of cuts them in half. <laughs> oh. Which is real fun watching her use the Kienzan, but... By the way, so we should probably mention this because I know a lot of people really love this scene, but again, it's a curb stomp. It's a beautifully animated curb stomp uh, featuring a character that everybody was looking forward to seeing in Super. But it it's a non-climax, it's Vegito versus Merzamas. Oh yeah, oh, I man. forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. I don't think of any of the Vegito Vegito fights as, or any of the fused Gogeta. Uh, uh, they aren't good fights. They are. They, they are. They are anti climaxes. Yeah, and they are cool moments. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. Vegito versus Boo is really cathartic and cool, and Vegito's really cool, and he's got yeah. all these cool moves and cool things that he does. He's a great video game character, but he's oh. not really, <laughs> like, the fight itself, like, hey, I'm a gumball now. Smack, 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 smack. Like, there's cool shit that happens, but it's not, like... In that in that same breath, uh, I'm just gonna throw this out here as the uh, GT apologist of the table. When Gogeta shows up, Super Saiyan 4, and is, like, just doing all sorts of crazy shit to, to Omega Shinron, again, very fun moment. Not really a fight yeah, yeah the only thing i can think of in gt that i'd even consider like you know this is good fight yeah. is like probably goku versus nova yeah uh that's I, like the and, and maybe nova versus ice yeah like those, I, those are like the two things that i actually think of as like fights yeah. yeah it's unfortunate gt doesn't have a lot of like so a lot of people still get upset about the fact that we give gt a lot of shit but i won't i'm not gonna lie to you the fights in gt kind of the, the, the fights in gt are not very good like yeah. as as someone who likes gt more than most i am willing to admit i because i it's wanted one of the reasons we brought you in on yeah, this like I, I, we I, need I, to hear like are there anything in gt that you'd want to i was i was ready to be the guy who was gonna to hold that flag but then when i looked through and try to like just kind of uh, scrub through some of the fights. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. None of these are really that great. Yeah, I, even, I like, like their there's, ideas there's, so much better than even all of Super their Seventeen. It just kind of ends with like Goku <clears throat> firing beam after beam after beam until he's overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate because the storyboarding for those fights is just very bad. It's very bad. The the choreography, the storyboarding, the animation, everything just kind of leads up to very dry, very boring uh, like exchanges. Mm -hmm. So. So we tried, GT. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to GT fans. Uh, but yeah, back to good stuff like Z. Let's talk Piccolo versus Cell. Like the first time. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. With like all those spin kicks and shit. I don't think it. I, I don't think it's like that high up there. But I think it's worth mentioning. Well, and it's I, also a good character moment just because this is the this is us seeing what Piccolo plus Kami looks like. Exactly. This and is yeah. the first time you're watching a powered up Piccolo against a new enemy. Yeah. Which yes. never bodes well. But. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, when you're the first person up to fight this new threat, uh, sorry, Dragon I mean, he Ball he won, guy. essentially, <laughs> yeah. that fight. Like, Cell had to run away. But... It, there was some good shit there. There was a lot of good stuff there. I mean, you got to witness, like, you know, the mystery that was Cell, and, you know, you get to see, like, oh, shit, his tail, like, it stabs people, it, like, it sucked out Piccolo's arm pretty hard. And then Piccolo, Piccolo uses that moment to trick Cell into giving information away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I loved yeah. that. I thought that was great. It just did not make for a great fight, unlike, you know, Piccolo 17, which did make yeah. the list. Which Hell is yeah, like, it did. Yeah, you get to see Kami Piccolo really do a fight. Out. Go crazy. Now, I can't remember, because I remember we really talked about it, but uh, on our list... Napa versus the Z Fighters. Napa versus the Z Fighters I didn't make it into the actual. Yeah, because I think because I think we were talking about it when we were doing a top twenty-four, putting like Raccoon versus Team Three Star and Napa versus everybody in kind of a back-to-back -back scenario, but in the end, Raccoon was just the better fight. Yeah, but and Napa is just another version of that. It's essentially a curb stomp, but it's one with a lot of great choreography and really cool moments. Yeah. I think I think Napa versus the Z Warriors is actually a spectacular, spectacular example. Uh, and maybe the best in the entire series of one character against a group. Yeah. Because he, you can tell that he's taking damage as time goes on, but nobody's able to take him down. Yeah, nobody's, nobody takes him off his feet until Gohan. Yeah, and it isn't until Goku that he finally goes down. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's kind of cool. Like, if you, want, if you want a character who's dismantling an entire team to really ratchet up the desperation, that's great. You know what? If you're going to do that, 
at least at least have it go throughout the entire cast and have some struggle there because there is and it's 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 stupendous. Yeah, Nappa is the first time like that fight with everybody in Nappa is the first time you feel genuinely desperate for Goku to show up and you know that's how it's going yeah. to end, but you don't know how many people are gonna fucking die before it happens. It's, yeah, it's also great because we've had this big training arc before that where like the whole premise of like the last however many yeah, we're episodes preparing for these has, two people. Ha- has been we are getting ready for this fight. So you're like okay they're gonna get here and we. You're going to be prepared, and it's going to be a cool, even fight. And then he shows up and just destroys everyone, and he is like admittedly the f- much weaker of the two people who have shown up by his own admission. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to put this out there: is the only reason that Raccoon went out on this spot because it was it had just spectacular animation. Yes, for that the, the, it's because the, it had spectacular animation, and the fight felt a little like a little more like, hey, maybe they can pull this off. Yeah, you, you got that feeling every now and again. It's like maybe they're maybe they'll pull a like you know a rabbit out of their hat. Maybe they won't need Goku to save them. They did, but yeah. maybe they have maybe they might have this because I, you have that powered up Vegeta. You have Krillin and Gohan who just got their big power boosts, and yeah. uh, you saw that they've already taken out one member of the Ginyu Force. And if they can take out this one, sure, maybe, maybe Goku will have to up. show up to help with the rest. But you know, what? I I think I think if it were up to me, I think I'd put a put Nappa above this. But mm-hmm. you maybe. make good points. You I also think points. I also think the Vegeta factor adds a lot because not only it does his stuff look really good, he is this uncertain team member where kind of like you know Gohan and Krillin make an effort to save him when he's about to get blasted by uh, Raccoon's eraser beam, and it, he just looks at him, he goes, "Why did you do that?" He's like, yeah. "Don't you get it? I wouldn't have done that for you." And it's just I, like, "Oh, more, this guy doesn't." even have our back yeah. like, well more specifically what he says is you could have ma- done real damage to him if you let me die yeah. and he, like, they, admittedly in that moment they did a lot of damage they shut his mouth on a fucking explosion but if yeah. it had been both Gohan and Krillin they might have actually been able to take him oh, yeah. out if Krillin had spent the time to charge up a Kienzan and just let's not talk half. about all the times that Krillin should have charged a fucking Kienzan I mean, I feel like we should. Let's do it. <laughs> I, I, next, next year's DB Semper. Top 10 times. Top 10 times Krillin should have used the fucking Kienza. <laughs> yeah, with the fucking solar flare. God damn it. Oh, uh, man. We could, we could go on and on about, like, this stuff all day. Like, yeah. other other great curb stomps. Vegeta versus Semi-Perfect Cell. Uh, There's also a ton of great fights in OG Dragon oh, Ball yeah. that I'm honestly Goku, just not thinking Goku about because it's been a long King, time since I've watched King it. King Piccolo's a cr- cool, like, cool moment. Yes. When Goku shows up, the fight is... Uh, but it's it, one sided ish. It's a little one sided, but the moment he shows up is such a cool moment. Oh, yeah. It's Save, really saving, like, it's the first time where Goku's got his big damn hero moment. But yeah. I mean, there, there are so many things that you can think of in Dragon Ball. Like, there's Goku Nam, which is really cool. Oh, yeah, you know, that's really a great cool. fight, actually. There's uh, Krillin versus Piccolo in that tournament. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Krillin versus I Piccolo really, Jr. Really no, that is really good. Yeah. Where Piccolo's it's, like, oh, this, this guy, this is another human who might yeah, actually go, be a threat. Uh, Goku versus Tien 2. Yeah, yeah, Goku versus Tien 2 is a great How one-sided fight. How often do we get fight. to see Tien lose his pants? How? Exactly. <laughs> Chi-Chi versus Goku for just a couple of seconds has some cool And moments. it has one of the sweetest moments and all. Like, <laughs> it, it made me cry. Like, I was like, oh, boy, so cute. Yeah. So like, Why are you touching me? Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's... it's there are a lot of really good little fights in all of Dragon Ball. Um, I think it's best fight. 16 fights. versus Cell. Like, it's got oh, fun shit. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. 16 versus Cell is so cool. It's like, so cool. But we get to see Hell's Flash. I, I think what we're trying to say is the fights that didn't make this list doesn't mean they were bad. No. Or you can't I mean, like it all them. comes down to personal preference, and we had, like, a very long discussion formulating yes. this list. The movies. Yeah. yeah. Movie, two <laughs> has one of, movie 2 has one of the coolest fights Goku with and Goku Piccolo. and Piccolo. It, Holy I mean, shit. It happens a lot off screen, but... Yeah. I'm actually. I was actually sort of mad it didn't make the list. No, I, I mean, I, I know watched, why it didn't. I we watched were, it a we few were pushing times for movie fights. For the it. only ones that, like, the only one that we really felt was that Janemba one. Yeah. Other than obviously and Battle of Gods, Gods, but that's like canon and it's fucking weird. Yeah. Dragon Ball. I mean, there's Cooler versus Goku is a fun cu- curb stop in my opinion. Like yeah. That that like that whole. Yeah, it's it's got some really cool moments. Yeah. Uh, it, I love I love the one where he smashes them into the mountain and then yeah and just <laughs> like that's just real satisfying yeah, planting yeah. that dumbass it tree runs uh, flies through the Kamehameha yeah. it's got really cool moments it's a great it's got a, it's got a great fight it's just too one sided yeah Dragon Ball needs to like and that's the thing that Dragon Ball needs to stop doing stop just doing one sided fights where one person gets destroyed well and that's, that's it's, it's it's one of the reasons like. I mean, it's it's a huge trope, mm-hmm. and Dragon Ball is super guilty of it. But even fights, 
so much like that 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 was a huge part of this list is like how many of these things are actual fights yeah how trucks many of these guys, cell. how many how many of these could have gone either way Tru- trucks versus perfect cell is uh, well it's actually still one uh, a curb stomp yeah it's still it's but ultimately a curb stomp but still looks really cool and does and a nice job it's a really fun moment and yeah, but yeah like that's kind of that's kind of everything we're trying to say here is like just because something that did not make the list like we still love all of these things clearly yeah. i mean we're passionately yeah, yeah. talking about fights that did not make this list if if time was not an object i feel like we could just keep going yeah so we could like, we could do like a top 50 top 100 <laughs> i don't know it's but. always it's always funny cuz i feel like some people like when we don't include something uh, on the list or don't put it higher that we don't li- like we don't like it no like, no no and can we just talk about the real most honorable mention Uh-oh. Evo Finals. Thank you. Uh, so, which is, <laughs> this is pressing it because apparently today it came out that Fighters isn't allowed to be at Evo Japan because of some weird rights thing. So oh, yep. it's being it's being real annoying. Um, but yeah, uh, Goichi versus Shadow Fox. Uh, it uh, was Sonic Sonic Fox. Sonic, Sonic Fox. Sorry, uh, was incredible. Uh, and we watched that. We were like jokingly like, oh yeah, we'll put this on the list. Maybe like, though. But, but no, there's <laughs> no, an we're arc not to it. it. <laughs> yeah. We just put it on. We're like, holy shit, yeah, this is amazing. Uh, yeah, Evo 2018 Grand Finals for Dragon Ball Fighters. I highly recommend you going to watch, even if you are not a competitive fighting game fan, because it is just, you see two people going into this fight, and the the mental warfare they have with each other while they're playing is just spectacular, and it's a whole, to you watch, know, To watch the two best players at a game, yeah. just in the world, go at it, is crazy. Especially in such a technical game. Yeah, exactly, and you're just seeing all of this stuff just where waiting for, just, like, one person to drop one thing, and all of a sudden that mistake just cascades yeah, into it. Yeah, because Dragon Ball is definitely a your, you make one mistake and your opponent will crush you. Yeah, yeah you now it's mistake. my turn to carry yeah. this. Yeah, you make one mistake and it is very possible you've just lost a character. Yeah, and this this fight has that all over the place because these are the two players who have you know have come through it all. And, and are, one of the biggest upsets. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Say I, what you will about either of them politically, as players. No, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah, it's insane. But yeah, that's that's it. This has been our roundtable discussion. Let us know in the comments below if there's like anything that we didn't mention that we should have. Because oh, yeah. I mean, we could be here for hours talking about these things. This is mostly just for brevity. <laughs> Somehow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> final episode, of, like the final number of DB Sembers coming later on today. Stay tuned for that one. And tomorrow. For a special Dragon Ball Z Bridge premiere. Wait, I thought I thought it's going to be. We're, this is going up with two. No, this is going up uh, the the day of number one because oh. it's honorable mentions. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so right. yeah, there you go. I, I am now making that decision for us. Right. And if I'm a liar, then I'm a liar. You'll uh, find I'm, out I'm eventually. Pretty good about doing that. Uh, also, go see go see Broly in uh in theaters yeah. next next month because yeah. apparently that's got a real fucking good fight in it. Merry and Christmas. We're gonna find out. So Merry Christmas and Happy Broly days. Yeah. Ah. Happy December. <laughs>